let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. There was a child in the village, a little boy. And this boy one day saw so clearly the face of a human being in the mountains. So what he wondered was, who is that person in the mountains? Every day, this boy would go and stand and look at the face in the mountain. Morning, he would look at the face in the mountain. Afternoon, he would look at the face in the mountain. Evening, he would go and look at the face in the mountain. Then he wondered again, who is that face in the mountain? So he went through the town, the village, looking for the face in the mountain. Thinking that somebody in the village might be that person in the mountain, the face is seen. Yet, no one in the village was the face in the mountain. Whenever a stranger came to town, whenever a visitor came to the village, he ran to the person to look and see if that person is the face in the mountain. Yet, the strangers and the visitors never were the face in the mountain. The story goes that when this little boy grew into manhood, when he became an adult, he himself became the face in the mountain. Yes. He himself became the face in the mountain. My dear friends, that is how it is if you are a Maseba. At your service. No. Fellow knights and ladies. Yes, sir. At your service. No. Fellow knights and ladies. Yes, sir. If you want to be the face in the mountain, you have to come to Jesus. You know, one thing about Peter, Simon Peter, I guess you all know him, the one who was the head of the apostles, is that because he spent so much time with Jesus, he became like him. We are told that when he was being questioned by that girl we are told in the Bible, he said, I didn't know him. But do you know why he was accused? Why they, you know, they knew he was one of them? They said, because the way you are speaking is like what? That man. So though he betrayed Jesus, he had learned to speak like who? Like Jesus. Peter betrayed Jesus. He denied Jesus. He said, I didn't know him. He denied him. Yet, he spoke like Jesus. So his three years stay with Jesus had an impact on his life. So much that after three years, Peter was speaking like Jesus. And because of the way he was speaking, they would say that you are one of his disciples. Whenever you hear that passage in the Bible, think of that event. How come they say he, has, he was speaking, he, because he was speaking like him? It was because Peter was speaking like Jesus. The way Jesus spoke, he was speaking like that. The way Jesus spoke, everything. You see, so that's how it is. If you serve God for one year as a server, a if you have been serving for the last 10 years, you should start speaking like Jesus. You should start having the face of Jesus, having the voice of Jesus. You should start being like Jesus. At your service. At your service. Do you want to have the face of Jesus? So this morning, I'm going to reflect with you shortly the mass server and the five faces of mercy. Amen. The mass server and the five faces of mercy. I will not take too much of your time. So as we are going, please, those with pens and papers, you can take them some notes for future reference. The mass server and the five faces of mercy. Recently, I read a book. The book is entitled The Great Divorce. I know some of you are very young, so you might not uh, get what I'm saying. It was written by one man called C.S. Lewis. Um, again, you can go and Google it. These days, with the internet, there's nothing you can't know. And C.S. Lewis died around the year 1963 here. It's told that he died the same day with um, President Kennedy of America. You know he was assassinated? The other, those who are adults amongst us will know of that. 22nd November, yes. But he died quietly in his house. Nobody made an announcement of it because that day Kennedy has died. So the whole world was thinking of Kennedy. Yet this man wrote a book somewhere in 1948, called The Great Divorce. Again, you can go to the net and Google it, and download it, PDF, and read it. Now, you have to be in the audio on, on YouTube. So, once a while, I listen to audio books. So, this past few days, I was listening to The Great Divorce on, on, on YouTube. And this is what I, 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 I came across. It's a book that talks about what the, 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 the old people were calling the refugee room. I will explain that. Don't worry. It's a big word, you know. Uh, it, was, it is like um, stories of 
souls in hell, and once in a while they get vacation, they get exiat, you know, to go to heaven. So it's a, that kind of story. So you can just imagine, it's a nice book, you can go and read it. So the refugee is about souls in hell, once in a while they get exiat to go to heaven. They take a vacation to have some refreshment of heaven. So in the book, um, some of the souls in hell went, got into a bus, and then they took off. The bus like a flying bus, you know. Hell was a huge place, so, so huge. So they traveled miles upon miles, miles upon miles, they were not reaching at your service. Oh. Fellow knights and ladies, yes. are you with me? Yes. Should I continue? Yes. So as they took off the bus, flying bus, for many miles, they were not seeing anything. They were just traveling and traveling. Then all of a sudden, they started seeing something new. Then they arrived at their destination. Later, they realized that where they had come was the forecourt of heaven. Then they had a discourse, a chat, a conversation with the spirits in heaven, the, the saints. And from their discussion, I'm going to pick three things, which give you the three faces of mercy, and then pick the two from the other sources. So the first one is this. When they got to heaven, the forecourt of heaven, and they saw the spirits, the souls in hell who had come for Asia, you know, they, they asked, ah, but where are we coming from? I mean, where, where, where are we? Where we are? Where is it? Because we, we don't know how much we have traveled, how far. What happened was that one of the spirits in heaven um, told him, them, took a, a blade of grass. I guess we know a grass, uh, the grass we have around. If you look at the grass, you pick just one, one of them. So one of the spirits in, he in heaven picked a blade of grass, and then the tip of it, the tip means just the, just the a small part of it. He said, where you are coming from, this is it. He just dropped it. This is it. Because of what? <laughs> you don't mean it. Hell is a huge place. No, no, no. no. This is where you are coming from. He said, no, hell is huge. Look, it's, it's a big, big, big place. The angel said, no, no, no. Where you are coming from is like this. Just the tip of the blade of grass. My dear friends, compared to heaven, hell is nothing. Amen. Compared to heaven, hell is what? It's nothing. In heaven, hell seemed a tiny piece there. And that's the first phase of mercy. Mercy is endless. Tell somebody, mercy is endless. Mercy is endless. Mercy is endless. You know, maybe you think that, oh, look at the sins of my life. I've done horrible things against God, against my neighbor. I'm a sinner. Yeah, when you bring your sin to mercy compared to God's mercy, it's like that. Tiny little thing. Your sin is just like a tiny drop, a blade, just small like that. So mercy is endless. God's mercy is so huge that when we come before it and we compare it to our lives, we just can't imagine it. That's the first lesson from that great book, The Great Divorce. The second phase of mercy. Then again, one of the men who had come from hell for Asiat, I guess remember the story? Yes. The, one of them was having a little reptile on his shoulders. A small reptile, just a tiny one, on his shoulders like that. And then once a while, the reptile will, 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 um, will, will, will say something small, you know, whisper into the ears of the person. Once a while, the, the reptile will whisper into the ears of the person. So it was like distracting him and the rest. So the, again, the spirit in, hell, in heaven asked him, should, should, I, should I kill it? Because the thing was worrying him. So the angel asked him, should I kill it? And the man said, oh, no, 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 don't kill it. It disturbs me. I know it worries me, but I like it. Don't kill it. Then the angel asked him a second time, should I kill it? So, oh, I wish you can do something about it, but, but don't kill it, don't kill it. The angel asked a third time, should I kill it? Then the soul that uh, goes from hell said, all right, all right, kill it. And then the angel crashed like that. And he fell to the ground. All of a sudden, the man was lean and weak, as if he had not eaten for years, then he started putting on flesh, growing big, fleshy with the cheeks coming up, you know, looking fine. Then that little thing that the angel crashed to the ground, it also turned into a beautiful, mighty stallion. That is a horse. 
Then this young man who has now become huge and strong mount onto the, 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 the horse and then right away the road. He was riding to the mountains. What does that stand for? That's the second phase of mercy. Mercy is surrender. Amen. Tell somebody, mercy is surrender. Mercy is surrender. You know, you have to surrender to God before he can do something for you. This guy knew that the animal was worrying him. But he says, oh, I'm okay, I'm managing with it. What is that little reptile? You have that little reptile in your lives. You know, that thing that always makes us uh, do something bad. But you, you know it's bad, but you want to do it, you know. That is your little reptile you have. That's what it stands for, last. Last. We youth, you know, sometimes we have the last few desires. We want to watch pornography, watch some indecent pictures and the rest. You know, they, they, you know it's bad, but you also tell it, it gives you, it makes you happy. You know, so you are keeping to wait. And God is asking you, should I kill it? Should I kill it? You know, until the guy, the boy, the man, the person allowed the angel to kill it, he wasn't free. And what does it stand for? When after killing the animal, we are told, he himself was put on flesh. So imagine, if that little reptile in your life, if you're able to kill it, to stop that, what's going to happen that you will start growing stronger spiritually? You put on spiritual weight. And what happens, we are told that the, the man rode on the horse to the mountains. In the Bible, we hear the mountains, I talk about where you can meet God. He went to meet God. And then, channeling your strength, energy, wasting on all these things, you can now worship God mightily and have a fuller encounter with God. Amen. At your service. So we have done two phases. First phase of mercy is what? Mercy is endless. Second phase of mercy, mercy is... Now we are going to the third phase of mercy. We have three more to go. From the same story, the last one. The book, The Great Divorce. Then again in the story, then the men from hell who are on vacation, you know, they are kind of holidays. Like some students have come for holidays. Sometimes when you are in school, school is like hell. Are you aware? Yes. Ah, so you want to come home. Home is like heaven. You know, so... That's why some, some people in school always they are going on Asiat. I don't know why. <laughs> Every week they are going for Asiat. They want to go home. Because home is heaven. And school is like hell. You know, nobody wants to go to school. So these men, they have come to heaven, which is their home, and they are taking Asiat there. Now they're third place of mercy. So what happened was that now they saw a possession, a beautiful possession. The angels, and then they were carrying a woman. Many angels are singing and carrying a woman in possession. And the, the men were wondering, ah, who is that woman? How come everybody is paying attention to her and the rest? You know, they were wondering. Some people thought that she might be the owner of the bus, you know, the bus that they brought them to heaven, you know? Then they asked the, the spirit from heaven, that, who, who is that woman that, that they, are, they are carrying there? And then the angel said, she's Sarah Smith. He said, what? Sarah what? Smith? Who is Sarah Smith? A common name. Sarah what? Sarah Smith. No name. He has never heard of that name before. He wasn't a popular person. She wasn't a popular person. She is not known. She's not known in the whole world. She's not an artist that everybody's praising. She has no fame. No, she's not worshipped by everybody. Sarah Smith. So what about her? He said, oh, when she was on earth, she was a nice woman. She goes around greeting people. She goes and say hello to that person. She went to her in sick, sick. She went and visit the person. When people are in prison, she gives them a person. When people want something to eat, she gives them food. Water to drink, she gives them something to drink. You know, taking care of those who are naked, clothing them. So this woman, nobody knew her. No reporter in the, even came to her to write her story when she was because her story was interesting. No reporter came to her. Nobody wrote anything about her in the newspapers. Nobody wrote a book about her when she was on earth. Yet in heaven, she's being carried by who? The angels. She had a third face of mercy. Mercy is service. Amen. Amen. Mercy is what? Service. Mercy is what? Service. Tell somebody, mercy is service. Mercy is service. So that's the third phase of mercy. Mercy is service. Now we call it the corporal ways of mercy. Have you heard that before? Yes. We heard a number of them in the first video. And it was mentioned when the, our lady, our sister read to us. You know, a number of them were read, were, were read in the first, we heard in the first video. You know. So, ways of mercy. We know a few of them. There are seven we are told. Let me just mention them in passing. One, feed the hungry, right? Two, what? Give drink to the thirsty. Three, clothe the what? The naked. Four, welcome who? Strangers. Five, 
attend to the, the sick. Sis, visit who? The prisoners. And the last one, bury the... So these are the seven words of mercy. So we are the year of mercy. Our theme for this celebration is, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. So you see, you will obtain mercy if you have been merciful yourself. If you go and read the book of the Gospel of to Matthew, chapter 25, 31 to 46, there's a story about mercy there. Jesus said that on that day, when judgment day, he will sit there left, we shall be telling, he shall ask you, when I was hungry, you gave me food to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me water to drink. And they know the story. Those on the left will say, oh, and those on the right will say, yes, we are happy. Those are the past questions for heaven. Hello? At your service? Hello. Fellow knights and ladies? Yes. You know, when you are going to write an exam, you need to study past questions. Are you aware? Yes. Because if you study past questions, you can know the trend of, of the question. So you can barely, barely have an idea. You can write an exam without studying past questions, you may be a failure. So Jesus has given us the past questions for heaven. He's saying that that day, judgment day, these are the questions. So if you want to pass the exams of heaven, learn these questions. When I was hungry, you gave me food to what? To eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me water to what? When I was naked, you gave me what? To clothe to, to wear. And look at us. We have the past question, yet we are not studying them. Imagine you have been given a poor. You know a poor, right? A teacher has given a poor. A poor cord. They crumb crumb, whatever. A poor crumb crumb. Oh, okay. At your service. Yes. Fellow nice and ladies. Yes. Should I continue? Yes. Should I continue? Yes. Right. Imagine you have been given a poor crumb crumb. That's what you are calling them. Say some. Um, and you are going to write exams. And everybody in the class is studying. And you alone, you don't study. What happened to you? You failed. You feel miserable, that's how they say, right? They say you face, you face miserable, mercifully, you know? So the point is that we have been given the apoc for heaven. So that day, no one has an excuse. You say, oh, Jesus, I was five years old. Oh, Jesus, I am only 13 years old. Oh, Jesus, I am 25 years old. Oh, Jesus, I'm a boy, that's why. Oh, Jesus, I'm a, a lady, that's why. You have no excuse. He has given the apoc for heaven, the past questions. When I was hungry, when I was thirsty, when I was naked. So if you want to pass the exams of heaven, start answering the questions now. Amen? Amen. At your service. Amen. Start answering the past questions now. Revising them. Learn how to share. Learn how to give food. Learn how to give water. Learn how to throw the, the naked. Learn how to teach the sick people. Those in prison. Learn to love. Learn to serve. I'm happy with the slogan. Fellow nice and ladies, learn and serve. No, a message what is service. So as we are serving God at the altar, serve God in your homes, serve God at offices, serve God in your school. Learn and serve. Learn from Jesus and serve by the two around. So the third phase of mercy. Mercy is service. The fourth phase. We have two more to go. The fourth phase comes from a story of a man whom we shall celebrate tomorrow. But because it's a Sunday, Shall not mention him. <clears throat> on Sundays, we usually don't um, celebrate uh, memorials. For Sunday is a solemnity. So tomorrow is 14th of August. But if tomorrow were to be a, a weekday, like Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, we we'll have Matthew Saint Saint Feast. It's called Saint Maximilian Maximilian Corby. Any of the World Youth Day programs here, show by hand. Yes, we shall we put our hands up for them. Put our hands up for them. You know, just last week, uh, they were with the Pope in uh, Poland. Did you see the Pope? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's an, it's an encounter, you know. They were with the Pope in Poland. And I hear they went to a place like uh, where Marzina Kobe was killed. It's called what? Auschwitz, right? In Poland. You know, it is a place that, hello, at your service? Okay. Uh, it's a place um, where people during the Second World War if you were a bad man for the, those who were people, or they only didn't like them, they would catch you and kill you. You know, and they would kill you. How they killed were was very miserable. So this man, Martina Kobe, who is now a saint, is always a free saint, but because it's a Sunday, we shall not talk about him, we shall be quiet about him. Possibly, every day will have been better. The story is that Martina Kobe was a caliphate. You all know that for now. And then, one day, 
in the prison, one of the prisoners escaped. And to make sure that nobody escaped from the prison, the people, the, the, the people who captured them said that, if one of you escapes, we shall kill ten of you. <laughs> Did you hear that? If one of you escapes, we shall kill how many? Ten of you. Which means that if somebody wants to escape, we advise the person not to go. Because if that person goes away, ten of you do what? Will die in his place. Unfortunately, one of the prisoners escaped. He ran away. So the soldiers came around and said, yes, last night one of you escaped. So today is the turn of ten of you to die. And they don't have any formula. They go around, you, come. You, come. You, come. So see, you have to do what? Because if they touch you, that means that you are going to die. So they chose ten men to be, to be executed. Then, the last man, when they chose him, he started crying. <laughs> oh, I, I like the word that some people say. He started crying, you know. He was crying, he, he knelt and begged me, please, I beg you, please, don't kill me. I have a wife and children. I think among, among the rest, he was the only person who was married. He said, please, I have a wife and children, please, don't kill me. I beg you, don't kill me. He was crying. Imagine a man like that in his 50s, crying. He was afraid to die because of his family. So because of the crying he was making, he was, it, was, it was touched naturally. If I dare, you all start crying. I think some of you also moved with tears in your eyes. But the thought is so touching. So what happened was that, then all of a sudden from nowhere, somebody said, I will take the place of that man. What? Somebody among those who were not chosen, says, I will take the place of that man. Then the soldier turns and who is that swine? So I miss a pig, right? You know it. Who is that pig talking there? Then the voice answered, I am a Catholic priest. I am a Catholic priest. That's the end of the story. So they replaced him. He came over, and the man with a wife and children went back, and he replaced that man, and he was killed. Can you do that? Hello? Hello? At your service? Fellow knights and ladies? I like your response. It speaks, it speaks volumes. It speaks volumes. What great love than a man to lay down his life for his friend. This man lived it. It was a movie. It was reality. It was happening. It was a life. He wasn't watching a TV, a movie show. It was happening. They took him with the nine of them, and then they served them for two weeks. They all died, but he somehow, miraculously, after two weeks of not eating, he was still alive. You know, all the nine men that died, he was still alive. So they wanted to hurry his death, so they injected him with poison, and he died. 1941 was the year. He became a saint, and tomorrow he will be and he has given us the fourth phase of mercy. Mercy is sacrifice. Mercy is what? Sacrifice. Tell somebody, mercy is sacrifice. Mercy is sacrifice. Yes. You have to have a phase of sacrifice. The phase of mercy is sacrifice. This is the man who says, I am a Kali priest. He didn't mention his name. His name was in his identity. His name was that even his name didn't matter. It was what he is. What made him who he is that he mentioned? One day, if you sit in a bus, a trot or a taxi or something, and somebody being treated injustice, can you say that? Stop doing what you are doing. And you say, Who is that? I'm a mass ever. Can you do that? You see? But, hello? At your service. At your service. But as you know, when we see people doing bad things, instead of stopping them, we shall do what? We shall I join them. Or sometimes you just what? You keep quiet. You see that boy treating that other person horribly. You know, and you, you, you don't want to say, because if you say something, they will, they will insult you. So in order to be quiet, you know, that man must not call me. You have kept quiet, right? At least he wasn't chosen. Was he chosen? So he was free. You can keep quiet. It's okay. Me too. I love my life. I will not die. But he didn't do that. So the next time you are running, people are doing negative things, somebody being treated unjustly, and you keep quiet, and you are watching. In your heart, you know I'm a master, but you are hiding your master identity. Jesus wouldn't do that. Maximilian Corbyn 
never did that. That's the fourth phase of mercy. I'm going to end now. The last one. The last one. I'm going to take again from the story of another great saint. He's called Thomas Aquinas. Have you heard of him before? Yes. Good. Any people from Thomas Aquinas, Sally Church? By, okay. Right. There are many here. So you know the story very well, very well, right? So Aquinas, hello at your service. Hello, nice ladies. Yes. Should I continue? Yes. Right, the last one. So Aquinas, Thomas, when he was getting to the end of his life, um, was started writing great books. He wrote a very great book. It's too much for you now. I mean, because we're here, let me mention it. We call it Summa Theology. The Summa Theology is a whole book, it's like an encyclopedia you know, of the Catholic Church and the teachings, the sacraments. But that evening, he was writing something on the Eucharist. You know the Eucharist? The body and blood of Christ, what we are marking now, the Mass. He wrote something on the Eucharist. And then after writing it, Thomas thought that, ah, what have I written? This is trash. Trash means that it's what? It's nothing. He thought that he had not written well. It's like when you write an exam and you finish, you realize, like, oh, no, this part here, I don't think I, I wrote it well. Have you had that feeling before? So Thomas had the same feeling. After writing the, the, about God's, the body and blood of Christ, he thought that, no, I should have done something better. So he was disappointed. So he went to the cell where his room. There was a picture of Jesus, the cross, the crucifix there. So he placed the paper, I mean, his script, what he had written, the notes, in front of the cross. And then somehow he was tired, so he slept in his disappointment. Then we hear that a voice from the cross spoke to him. And the voice said, said his words, Thomas, Thomas, you have written so well about me. What can I give, give you as a reward? Thomas, you have written so well about me. What can I give to you as a what? A reward. He was thinking that he has written something useful. But God is saying it was so, so good. So, Thomas answered the Lord. He said, what do you want as a reward, right? He answered with those beautiful Latin words. For this, that is my theme. I took from this man. They are in Latin. Non nisi te domine. Non nisi te domine. Shall we repeat the words? Non nisi te domine. For the last time, non nisi te domine. Those are the last words for, for nothing, if not you, Lord. Or nothing except you, Lord. Maybe you can think of those words. Nothing except you, Lord. Non nisi te domine. He replied that way. So he's saying that, God, I don't want anything. I want you yourself. If Jesus should ask you now, what should I give you as a reward? What would he say? You see, my dear friends, my dear sisters and brothers, my dear um, servants, fellow nice ladies, if you say money, if you say uh, a car, a house, a mansion, if you say even marriage, if you say even education, if you say anything worth about wealth, pleasure, and power, my dear friend, you, 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 Apart from what Thomas Aquinas said, then you are wrong. The only answer should be what? Nothing except you, Lord. I pray that we here, when God asks us, please shall he ask us at mass, what do you want from me? Let us not ask for material things. They are good, but they will end at the grave. You see, if you ask for money, you ask for things of the world, those things can control you. They may be let to stop what worshiping God. I've seen people who are not God, they have so many things, they don't come to Mass again. They are, they are okay. You see? But if you ask for Jesus, non is it a domine, nothing except you, Lord, then if, if you have so much money and people and power and pleasure, to help you to what? To control them. Or even if you have Jesus, and you don't have money, you don't have wealth, you don't have power, you don't have pleasure, Jesus will help you to live without them. You see how it is? If our Jesus were what? Everything. Everything. So that is the fifth phase of mercy. It is mercy is reward. Amen. Mercy is what? Reward. So that is the last phase of mercy, which I will be share with you this morning. The seven and the five phase of mercy, I'll, I'll go back again. One, mercy is what? Endless. The second phase, mercy is what? Surrender. The third phase, mercy is what? Service. The fourth phase, mercy is what? Sacrifice. And the last phase of mercy, mercy is what? Reward. Clap for yourselves. So my dear friends, um, that brings us to the, the end of our reflection. But let me end um, the reflection with, um, not a story, but for, with something about 
an old building which was being offered for sale. And the auctioneer, I mean the person was doing, no one that didn't have a true auction, they raised like that and said, how much? So an, an old building which was being offered for sale. So the auctioneer said, yes, how much did I get for this building? He said, one dollar, two dollars, three dollars. He said, go in, go in, go in, and go on. Then, one, a man came from somewhere from behind. He took the violin and played a heavy, a heavy melody. So nice. And all the people were in the room were so much touched and moved. Then the man raised the same old violin and showed the people. said, now, how much will I get for this violin? Hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. Go in, go in, and go on. Then somebody in the crowd, somewhere there, shouted, ah, but, but who changed it well? You understand that? It was sold for three dollars. Now how, now how much? Three hundred dollars. Somebody asked, ah, but what changed its price? What happened that it had to change? Then came the answer from behind. The touch of the master's hand. The touch of who? The master's hand. The touch of the master's hand on the old violin gave it a new price tag. You see, if Jesus touches your life, my dear my service, if Jesus touches your life and even it's old, it's out of tune, your violin of life is not giving music for people to dance, Jesus will change your price tag. Do you believe that? He will change your price tag and give you a world. He will give value. He will place value on you. You will not be the same as you serve every day at Mass. See it as an opportunity. A way of God always adding value to you. You should never be the same the first day of yourself compared to what you are now. Keep growing in spirit. Keep growing in spirit. Before you realize, you become the face in the mountain. Become like Jesus himself. May he bless us now and forever. Amen.